thank you so much all of you for joining in so today we have anmol bansal with us so uh, i'm very proudly uh, saying this he is all india rank 1 in cb2 in uh, december 2022 attempt also he was all india rank 1 in cm1 earlier so today we have him uh, with us he is working currently working at mazars um so today he'll be guiding us as to what was his strategy um as to getting all in the rank 1 in two consecutive papers and specifically we'll be talking about cb2 today what was his strategy in cb2 and just to give you all a brief introduction um cb2 uh, as people say is a very easy paper but actually it is not uh, the content is very huge we have 23 chapters to cover and along with that uh, uh if you see the content and if you see the passing result which is a uh, near about very good for cb2 always um and it's very difficult to get a rank in a easy paper because uh you are getting that rank maybe you are just you know um, one or two mark ahead so you have made that mark uh, maybe you have done that MC all mcqs correctly so it's very difficult to get rank in easy papers um because there are a lot of students competing uh so today we have anmol anmol will be guiding us as to what was his in uh, strategy um hi anmol thank you so much for joining hi hi shivangi di i uh, am i audible yes yes you are audible so now the stage is all yours so now let just quickly guide us um uh, firstly tell me how are you feeling about the rank uh the this was completely unexpected uh, first of all even the previous rank that i had in cm1 was completely unexpected but uh, yes after giving exam it was like feeling uh, a very confident feeling that yes i could clear the exam but yes the rank i was completely uh, it was completely unexpected even i was working at that point of time when you call me and you said it uh, you have ranked and i was like oh seriously <laughs> and then praveen praveen sir again repeated the same that you have ranked in cb2 and that <laughs> it was like completely a surprise for me right so yeah i just saw your i just saw the rank list and i saw anmol in it and i just called him that and he didn't, he was not aware about the rank so that's really good anmol um so tell us uh, how many months you took to prepare for cb2 and did you appear for any other paper with cb2 yes so basically my uh, i was initially preparing for cm2 only cm2 but then as cm2 was progressing i was like i could pick up another paper and then i took uh, pick up cb2 as well so uh, in total i have studied cb2 for around 2 months i would say along with cm2 okay so cb2 i have studied for 2 months so maybe you started in the month of october i believe right. uh, all right okay so uh, you are working as well and you were working then as well so yeah. how did you manage to you know divide your time between work cm2 and cb2 okay so the working as like uh, it was a very it is currently being a very busy season of uh, like working and the season started i would say in september or october and then it was really it was really hectic picking up paper like cm2 and then having cm cb2 along with it with the lot of theory and then your working hours being extended hours or two but then uh, cm2 i would say i was majorly fo focusing on cm2 because it has two further divisions one is excel and then another is paper a but then for cb2 i would say specifically cb2 is all about graphs i would say like graphs have been really helpful for me for what like what have been helping me for all my exams previously as well is that i note down every point like i can't read and get it like in my head i have to rewrite it multiple times so that i could grasp the point and considering cb2 cb2 like i have a separate notebook for my notes and a separate notebook only for graphs it was completely filled with graphs along with graphs on the left i have written every single point relating to that graph and the only revision that i did was through graphs because graphs is very like a key thing in cb2 that has been but at cb2 i have like it has to be cb2 have to be given some time it is not like in a very easy paper like people people think cb2 is a very lengthy paper a lot of theory lot of concepts even if you do not read the minor points you will not be able to get the mcqs clear So you have to reread, you have to rewrite everything, and graphs again. It would be really helpful for you all. 
Right. So this is a very good point, as I mentioned in my classes as well. Those who are CB two students over here, um, as I mentioned, that graphs are very important, and it's very again, it's very important to draw the graphs. So just by looking at the graph, you'll not be able to remember it. In fact, for I four students, those who, uh, for those who graph is not coming, uh, you'll not be able to draw the graph uh, on Word file. But definitely, you have to practice by drawing it. Again, uh, so Anmol, how much time? Like, can you just tell me how much time did you divide between your work, CM two and CB two, and did you study both CM two, CB two every day or uh, alternate days? How was it for you? Okay, for CB two I studied every day because you can't break your flow of concepts. Definitely for CM two it was alternative days, and then Excel was on Saturday and Sunday. So that was like uh, that is how I divided my time. So CB two cannot be done alternative days, I believe, because you have to keep revising everything, and a, no, a lot of new concepts come up every day. So yes, CB two is something that you have to uh, read every day, even if it if it is one hour or two hours, like whatever time you can give it. Correct. So, uh, how much time you gave on a daily basis? On a daily basis, considering I was working, I could only give one point five hours or two hours every day. That was nice. Okay, so yeah. that is perfect. Giving two hours every day also consistently for two and a half months, two months is a very nice thing. Um, okay, so just guide us how you prepared in this two months for CB two, like from where you started. uh studying everything like just give us the entire journey we have most of the cb2 students over here who have recently started studying for mm -hmm. their ifoa and iei so there is approximately the same two two months three months left so guide us what should be the plan for us to go ahead for the april attempt and for the may attempt okay so considering that we have a further 2 2.5 months again for the coming exams i would say the first thing would be to go through every chapter and you know mark every important point or if like me if you are like uh, habitual of writing every point that would be really helpful because cb2 is all about memorizing thing and that is too much of it so i would say you have to uh, what i do is i have got a top down approach always so i start with reading everything and then i keep narrowing my approach whatever concepts that i feel are you know have causing me a problem or something like that So you have to at least uh, for what what was my approach is that I read around the entire compiler around three times. That was like really helpful. And then graphs again. You I would say graph if you could you know just by looking at the graphs you could interpret the entire question. That would be really helpful. So the first thing I would say you have to go through the entire compiler once. Number two, then you have to go through the past papers and the how specifically the MCQs because if you could crack the MCQs then there's nothing you know left in the exam. So MCQs would be the the other point, and then again rereading the uh you know compiler and focusing on the because when you get into into the macro part, you will feel that it is now getting too much, because micro is something law of demand, law of supply, and then all of this is very you know simple. But as soon as you kick into the macro part, you will find that oh my god, that is this is being a very very huge syllabus, and how I how should we do it? And then coming onto the last chapters, it is completely you know something that you have to memorize. There's nothing. to you know which you could interpret or something like that it is all history and what all approaches were taken previously so i would say focus majorly on you know graphs and then number two re reading the entire compiler at least two or three times that would be really helpful so also I, as yeah, yeah. yeah. go ahead also go ahead. as a previously said do not uh, break your flow at any point of time give as much as time you could give and then on saturday sunday you could you know give an entire weeks revision but you all have read in the previous 7 days or 5 days so i think he has broken down in a very good manner first is do not break the flow that is the most important thing even if you are able to give just one hour in a day do that some days uh, maybe due to work you can just give one hour do that secondly as i mentioned in my classes read the compiler again and again so as he mentioned reading it three times if you have read the compiler three to four times you can easily get those short five mark 10 mark questions which i'll come to and you have also discussed about past papers so anmol tell me what was your approach uh, towards the mcqs how you prepared for it because it it is of 39 marks and i believe if you are getting 39 on 39 which is not very difficult to get if you practice all the past papers you can easily get that um, and five marker question and 10 marker question so what was your approach for short and long questions and also for the mcqs okay so for uh, 
clearly like when i first read through the compiler i uh, took pick, pick up the previous year's papers to see how is the format and how you know what is the level of the paper considering it is i and it is again uncertain so going through the mcqs i could feel that it is not you know even every minute detail could be given in the mcq and once you read the mcq you, in some of the mcqs you could figure out that all the four options seems to be correct in that case you could go in a different manner like cancelling the options which you feel are not at all the answers and number two again writing everything because what my approach has been i could never you know read something and then i could memorize it that has never been my approach and that has never helped me so what i do have been writing everything and once you solve mcq so once you uh, once you start solving mcq you will figure out that something which was not clear when you read the compiler has is now much much more clear after you get the values after you get the numerical figures you will find that it is much more clear now so i had something like three four pages i would say every time i solve an mcq and i was stuck in there so i used to write what point i was stuck in the exact point where i used i was stuck in why couldn't i solve the mcq so i would say for mcqs this would this could be your approach you should definitely solve every each and every mcq of the like the past papers and revision of everything so and if again mcqs consider mcqs as you know the topmost priority because if you could do that cb2 is definitely you're going to definitely clear this paper Con, uh, coming to uh, five marker and 10 markers five marker and 10 markers you have to explain as much as you can because cb2 is all about writing you can stick only to the one point and uh, score marks on that you definitely have to write also if uh, what i was thinking before exam is that even if it is a five marker or a 10 marker and it is not written that you have to plot you know make a graph or something because it was iai we were allowed to make graph so i felt that i should draw graph even if it is not mentioned because that would definitely give you know give me an upper point on that so yes for 10 marker definitely you will be you will be giving uh, to draw one graph and yes graph would be really helpful in pointing down and the last division that i told you that uh, draw one graph and then keep pointing down every point would definitely help and also keep narrowing your approach do not read everything again and again just keep narrow down your approach to the most important concepts that you are stuck in again and again so very nice uh, now um so basically no uh, what happens is that you have to mention the keywords in long and short questions that is what he said that even and the most important thing is not only the length of the question but breadth of the question will also matter so if i am giving for if, for example it's a five marker question and i'm just writing 10 points it will not get uh, get me marks i also have to explain those points so at the moment you are not explaining any point you are not getting any marks for it so if you are writing one point make sure you explain it properly as well and then you move to the next point this is how you get marks and again uh, all those five marker and 10 marker needs good writing so for example if i say it's a five marker question you have to complete maybe 3/4 page and if it's a 10 marker question try to give one and a half page uh, of writing so this this is just a typical five mark 10 mark uh, thing that we have um and mcqs as he said whenever you are practicing mcqs uh wherever you are stuck you will be stuck in a particular concept so write down that concept again just try to understand that where you are making that mistake okay so that is very important for mcqs because uh in mcqs we generally get stuck in and they actually test all the concepts and they dug, dig very deep so in in the concepts so that is also very important oh, yeah. all right so and more another thing uh, so this is how we prepare we go about we read the compiler nicely three four times we make the graphs we do all the past papers so how many past papers did you complete i i go with revision notes and i completed it like the entire revision notes we have multiple okay that, yeah okay and for india uh, iia papers how many india iia past papers did you do uh, i took it from 2020 so i was mainly okay, focusing so on iia yeah Left. okay so you have done so i think uh, if we see that you have done five, four five five six uh, iia papers as yeah well. all right so doing i think yes for iia students at least solve 10 past papers it will give you a very good clarity over there and again try to solve all the ifa past papers as much as possible 
okay so uh, anmol uh, can you just tell us like uh, towards the end for example 10 days are left for the exam and uh, most of you are appearing cp2 as your second paper like you appeared for cm2 and cp2 so towards the end of 10 to 15 days uh, when we have for the exam th then what should be the approach at that point of time how should we you know go about it um and mol are you or uh, are you there hello yeah 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 so i was asking that uh, when we have like 10 to 15 days left for our exams and most of us have cb2 as the second paper we are appearing for cm2 and cb2 maybe so um, or some other cs cm papers so in that last 15 to 10 15 days what should be our strategy Okay, so for the last ten to fifteen days, is you could do like what, what others do or what I used to do previously was uh, covering the uh, easier part first and then keeping the harder you know concepts at the end, just before the exam. But I would say you should give maximum time to the points or the you know the concepts that you feel you have you are lacking on. Uh, the one that I mentioned, like it could be on MCQs or it could be on five marker or a ten marker or graph specifically. so in that case you should uh, you know prioritize giving those harder concepts an initial go so that you can you know give at least two or three revision to those concepts and then easier parts as you as you you will figure out that you could do it you know two times even in a day or two but for the harder concepts i would say because every this happens with everyone because if you think this concepts have, have never been tested before and you leave it you'll definitely get into your exam so i would say give never leave any concept yes even when you will start solving mcqs you will figure out comparative advantage effect for example seems a very simple question but when you try and solve it you will figure out oh you have to look at uh, like look the values in a row wise way or a column wise way so you'll definitely stuck there so i i stuck it there multiple times so i would say you know give the harder concepts the ones you noted down every time you solve a question that should be your priority and then the in e easier concepts or the initial concepts could be revised again right um it's very important that towards the end and one more thing very nicely you mentioned out about comparative advantage questions that we have it looks very easy when you just see the solution but when you sit down and you actually solve it on your own you realize that it's not very easy and we and most of us most of us get stuck many a times even i do so right very good so that is one thing which we have to be and as i mentioned you have always have to practice these kind of questions whatever you leave it will come in exam for sure so don't try to leave any any concept uh, undone this is again very uh, important thing um so yes anmol uh, like we have covered most of the aspects now you just tell us maybe some tips or some tricks which you used in your maybe cm1 and you use in all your papers like you have cleared C cm2 as well so you have written you have talked about that you write and you practice um, so what is a unique strategy that you follow and your time table like you start when do you study and how you manage that discipline along with work so just you know give us motivation as to how we can also manage and work and studies and at the same time have that discipline in us continuously okay okay so the uh, like i have joined i have started working around an year before and i gave two exams in march previous year and then two exams in december as well so i initially it was really hard considering that you are working 8 to 9 hours and then you have to pick you have picked up two papers and then one is with excel or one with is with r that is really really difficult but i would say everything is manageable if you could you know plan everything your daily routine one thing is that you can you can take a break if if you have two papers and you have a job so basically if you have to either anything could work for you like i used to study late night i can't wake up wake up early and then i can study i can't give my time in the morning so what i used to do i used to study till 1 or till 2 making sure that even if you are not in a mood or you feel you are not you know getting Uh, much into studies today you can have a break of an of an hour or two but you definitely have to maintain that flow maintain that momentum and yes it is not like if you are having two exams and you have a job you should not you know go out or you know you should just stay and sit and study because that something you know builds pressure on your mind and 
uh, this but if you focus too much also that too distracts you because you you know feel very much stressed and everything so i used to go outside i used to even watch movies i used to play everything but yes you just have to focus that you sh- do not uh, break the flow also considering which exam you are lacking in once you start reading both the exams you will feel that cm2 requires most of my time or cm1 requires most of my time or for majority of our cases excel requires most of our time so you have to plan that you should give that particular lacking point much more time than the other two parts that part that you are giving in so yes that would definitely have help you and then saturday sundays these two have been really important part of my life since past one year i would say because saturday sunday is the majority is the like the best time i could give to my studies and everything because if for, for example if you have cb cb1 or cb2 something that requires your daily attention then you could give cm2 and cm1 your saturday sundays like entire saturday sunday could be your cm1 and cm2 one day you could do your cm1 paper a or cm2 paper a and the other day you could do paper b also considering cs1 cs2 and cm1 cm2 you have to uh, focus equally on excel or be it r because that that is only the 30% of the portion of your marks but that 30% does make a difference so i would say uh, you know making a timetable something like that but making sure on that that you do not break concepts you do not break your flow of papers that require your attention specifically theory exams and then for practical exam you definitely can give a go on alternative days and excel and r have de- uh, has to be definitely go hand in hand this these cannot be you know done in the last one week or so that have to be equally contributed to your exams then you schools okay so you have actually answered a lot of things over here um so a quick question uh, how much hours were you able to take out on every weekend okay so on every weekend like i i do not i never plan for like number of hours i used to uh, like you know make a target of this many chapters or this many questions have to be completed anyhow even if you are like what happens is if you plan to study 2 to 4 and you are not in a mood so you would, will not be able to cover your two you won't be able to give your two hours you will only be able to grasp the concept only for 30 minutes or 40 minutes so what i used to do if i am in a mood i used to extend my two hours to four hours if i am not in a mood i used to decrease my two hours to only one hours because i know if i could do it sometime other i could grasp it in maybe an hour or so so that is something i would say never like this has never worked for me planning number this the like 10 to 12 economics and 12 to 1 something other whenever you are you think you can give it one extra hour, do give that so that would be helpful okay so very nice i think this is a motivation that you have given to all of us and a good life lesson that do not uh, you know talk in numbers quantitative study is not good qualitative is good so quality study is very good uh, just plan your targets so yes plan your targets and more how you planned your targets uh, do you do you had like weekly targets or daily targets or monthly targets kaisa tha yeah so initially i tried daily targets but my working hours were not fixed it was like two hours some day extending it was one hour some day extending so i tried and planned weekly targets so it was really easier then planning short term targets you could have like if you go to you plan a weekly target you have to complete let's say three chapters and then if you could then break it down into multiple days that would be helpful because that you can if the ultimate aim should be completing the weekly target you can change your number of working hours or number of study hours accordingly but weekly targets were my mainly focus right so uh weekly try to have your weekly targets it's not about the number of hours some days you might have to give more some da- some days you can give less but you try to achieve those targets and then maybe you can reward yourself on sundays right so that is a very good motivation point um we have got a lot of things covered over here for any questions you all can just quickly write in the chat box so that anmol can take it up um so i feel really really proud uh, when anmol be- because i have seen him in cs2 he he is one of the most brightest and at the same time a very hard working student i was very very happy to see him on the toppers list and uh, he has also see, seen his share of downturns um but i feel very happy very proud that he has actually bounced back and in a very good way so and mol i really feel happy for you and you really make us proud Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much for giving me this, you know, opportunity of 
making everyone aware of how i study or what was like because it is something i have seen downfalls i have seen what it feels when you are you know at the lowest point of your life but then how you ba- bounce back and what it feels when you bounce back is a really different feeling is something you know that makes you much more confident and that you know that just makes people also believe in you and you know uh, forget about your past and everything also the those past learning those downfalls are obviously your you know motivation if you could if you take i have seen people you know even thinking if once they feel that i leave actuaries because this is not something my cup of tea but once you start once you take it as a motivation that okay if i have missed one attempt why not i could crack two in the coming attempt so that that could be compensated or if you could you know uh, compare yourself with yourself only rather than comparing with others that would definitely make you achieve something in your life for sure so you you have actually you know covered many things over here and uh, l- seriously given us a good motivation before our exams and we have just 2 months left uh, so all of us are ready uh, we know how to go ahead with these 2 months and prepare for cb2 and also he has given us good idea about the others other papers as well if you all have any questions you all can just quickly put it up in the chat box and if anmol you have anything else to add on over here then you can also add it up so yes yes, yes anmol go ahead as you mentioned for cb2 that keywords are like a very important thing so that uh, writing down again would help you you know memorize it rather than focusing on if it is law of demand i have to specifically write this word rather than doing this if you write every each and every concept multiple times you'll definitely you know keep coming up with words when once you are in exam so that is something i would like to cover or add on yeah okay so i think Okay so Anmol uh we have a nice message for you uh in the chat box um but honestly I have I have known him personally and I've seen him and I've seen that stage and I feel really happy and students who are not able to clear any of your exam in the past maybe your IIF or your IIIM attempt trust me um that is just one phase but if you work on yourselves and uh you be you are consistent you are disciplined uh honestly you will be able to clear your exam and with a very good marks and we have a living example and hard work is the only thing i will say hard work is the only thing being consistent and being disciplined so thank you so much anmol uh we'll have you again very soon because uh, all of us need the motivation and all of us need your advices so thank you so much and uh, if anyone has any question i'll just wait for one more minute and then we'll end this session thank you so much anmol for taking us uh, taking time for us uh, taking your time for us and then we'll have you again in future maybe in, sure. maybe i'll have you again in one month <laughs> sure the thank you so much everyone for joining in and listening to me and thank you so much the again for giving me this wonderful opportunity any thank query you. anyone have yeah um i don't think we have because i think you have covered almost every aspect of cb2 so yes those who say cb2 is easy please do not listen to them it's your time please start studying at least give 3 hours every day and then you can easily clear the exam thank you thank you so much all of you thank you so much anmol thank you thank you everyone thank you so much thank you